Hello and welcome to part two of Evaluating Watersheds. In this video, you will learn about watershed measurements. After completing this video, you will be able to calculate watershed area, length, and slope. Then you should be able to calculate the channel length and slope, and finally determine the shape of a watershed. One of the first measurements that you will do is the area of a watershed. Area of Bourbon Canyon is highlighted in a purple outline. This is the area of the watershed boundary to the outlet of interest. The area itself can be measured in many different ways. A grid can be placed on the topo. The area of each grid or box is known, and then you can count the boxes. This is what is done when you do not have access to technology. Another method, and more common, is using computers to assist with measuring the areas. This can be done using AutoCAD, MicroStation, Google Earth, and GIS. Finally, a planimeter can be used. This is a device that is used to make measurements on plan sets. This is particularly useful for quantities on old plans that are not digital. Feel free to pause the video and go to a Google search engine and type in planimeter so you could see what these look like. Watershed area in the US is typically measured in acres. It's important to note that one acre is equal to 43,560 square feet. For very large areas, there are times when the area is measured in square miles. Next, we have the watershed length, or LW. The watershed length is shown in the black dashed line provided on the Bourbon Canyon watershed. It is the distance along the main channel from the outlet and extends to the basin divide and in the US is measured in feet. The third measurement is the watershed slope. It is determined by taking E2 at the basin divide and subtracting it from E1 at the outlet and dividing it by the watershed length. The watershed slope is dimensionless. Channel measurements can also be made using the topographic map. The channel length, LC, is highlighted in blue. It is the length along the main channel. Most USGS top topos show main channels with a light blue color. The channel slope is determined by taking the elevation different from the top of the channel, EC, to the outlet, E1, and dividing it by the channel length, LC. Similar to watershed slope, this is a dimensionless number. Slope can be used for many different purposes, but it's primarily used to understand how quickly water will drain in a system. The steeper the watershed, the faster the water will move. Now take a minute and pause the video. It's important that you pull out your delineation of Burbank Canyon that you did in part one and identify your E2, your EC, your E1. Look up the elevation values. Is it a thousand feet, a hundred feet? We will use these numbers in class when we meet. Next, we're gonna talk about watershed shape, which can be a very useful concept. However, it's not very helpful in hydrologic design. What it is helpful in is understanding conceptual concepts associated with water movement in a watershed. One type of shape is a circular shape. A circular watershed shows that water from all parts of the watershed will arrive at approximately the same time at the outlet, causing a high peak discharge. The second type of watershed is an elliptical watershed. In elliptical watersheds, the water from the watershed is more spread out over time and causes a much lower discharge. Therefore, if we can understand the shape of a watershed, we can understand the type of response that is needed. There are two ways to determine the shape of the watershed. The first is the elongation ratio. It states that the elongation ratio, RE, is equal to 2 divided by the watershed length, LW, times the quantity of the watershed area divided by pi raised to the one-half power. Pause the video and think about when what the value of RE would be for a circular watershed. Remember the length of a watershed for a circle would be the diameter and the area is pi r squared. The second method is the circularity ratio. The circularity ratio FC is equal to the watershed perimeter divided by the quantity four times pi times the watershed area raised to the one half power. Again, pause the video and think about when FC is for a circular watershed. Again, remember a perimeter of a circle is two pi r and the area is pi r squared. I hope this video has helped demonstrate how you can take measurements from the topography to determine the areas, lanes, slopes, and the shape of a watershed. In class, we will further practice these concepts.